By the end of this video, we'll have a formula with which we can answer this question, how many factors 720 have, in just a few seconds. But more useful than the formula, more transferable than the formula, is the reasoning behind the formula, the logic behind the formula. So we're going to spend most of our time sort of developing the, uh, 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 the reasoning and the thought processes that we can uh, use on a fairly broad range of questions. So to start, let's, let's use A. Let's organize our thinking with a, a definition. If I take a multiple and divide it by one of its factors, what do I have to get? Well, if this bottom number really is a factor of this top number, it needs to, it needs to go in evenly and, and, and cancel out altogether, and we need to be left with an integer. So where does the 720 go? Well, we're trying to find the factors of 720. So that is our multiple. So that will go on top. 720 divided by one of its factors, by divided by any of its factors, needs to be an integer. So we can use this to, I guess, to organize our thinking. But, 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 but still, it's going to be hard to think of all the numbers that will divide, that can go down here, that'll divide evenly into 720. And, and there's going to be a lot of them. So well, in order to make deductions, I want to rewrite 720. And, and, and this is probably one of the, maybe the major takeaway uh, from this video. On factor multiple questions, especially factor multiple questions that involve large numbers, it becomes a lot easier to make deductions if we put those numbers in their prime factored form. So let's prime factor 720. And to prime factor this, uh, you'll recall that I just need to, I can start with any two numbers that, that multiply together to get 720. So I guess it could be, could be 10 and 72. And neither of these is a prime number, so let's continue breaking them down. 10 can be broken down into 5 and 2. And both of these are prime, so these branches end here. 72 I can break down into 8 and 9. Neither of these is prime, so let's keep going. 8 becomes 2, 2, 2. 9 becomes 3 and 3. And now all the branches end in prime numbers. And I've, 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 I've prime factored 720. But I want to emphasize this about prime factoring. A number's prime factorization, it's not just some, it's not just a trait of that number, it's not just some characteristic of that number, it's also a way that we can rewrite this number. I could re, I can, I can, if, it might be easier to, and it's likely to be easier to make deductions, if I rewrite 720 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, I got a couple of threes, three times three times five, or two to the fourth, three squared, and a single five. So let's see what, whether that allows us, as I, as I have implied, whether that allows us to make some more uh, deductions over here. So I'll rewrite 720 as four twos and two threes and a five, and now I want to, I guess, try again to think about what kinds of numbers can go in the denominator, such that I end up with an integer. Actually, I guess I don't, I don't want that, I don't want that word down there because I want to think about uh, the kinds of numbers that that I can, uh, that I can put down there. So. So let's see. Well, first of all, immediately we can all see all kinds of numbers that cannot go down there, right? Like I can see that it, it's, it's not going to work for me to put a 7 down there because 7 has nothing to cancel with. I'll be stuck with some weird number in my denominator, and when I divide, I'm going to end up with, with uh, uh, some decimal, not an integer. So. We can quickly see numbers that can't go down there, and we can quickly see numbers that can, right? I could, I could definitely put a 2 down there, because that'll cancel with one of these 2s. 
And I can, I can put a couple of twos, right? A couple of twos cancel. How many twos all together could I fit down there? Well, I could fit four twos. Could I fit five? No, five isn't gonna work. Sure, these four are gonna cancel. Oops, I meant to write a two, but I was writing the number. I wrote the number I was saying. Uh, but I can't put this fifth two down here, right? Four of them will cancel, but the last one is gonna be stuck and I'll have nothing to cancel with. So maximum four twos. What's the minimum number of twos? Well, we said I could just have one two, but is that the minimum? No, I, I could have zero twos, right? Like say, maybe I could just have a three down here, say. And I don't need to have a two to make to make three a factor of all this. So so there so I could have zero twos down here, or one two, or two twos, or or, or, or three or four twos. Similarly with the threes, I could have zero or one or two threes. Uh, and with the five, I could have zero or one. So uh, well let's Let's organize our thinking like this. The total number of ways to deal with the twos. The total number of ways to deal with the twos. Well, we said it could be zero to four, and altogether, that is five ways, right? One through four plus zero. And the ways to, the number of ways to deal with the threes well, it could be zero, one, or two, and altogether that's three ways. Three ways to deal with the threes, and the number of ways to deal with the five, uh, well, it could be either no fives or one five, so that's two ways. So how do I combine this info? Well, let's think about it. For, for each of these five ways, Say I have one two. If I have one two down here, then that could be combined with any of my three ways to deal with the threes, and that could be combined, and those combinations could be dealed, could be combined with any of the ways to deal with the fives. In other words, I have two ways, and for e or five ways, and for each of those five ways, three ways, and for each of those, well, I guess we're gonna have to multiply, right? Since it's for each of these, we have three. And then for each of those, we'll have two. Uh, so to combine this info, we're gonna multiply and we end up with, let's see, five times two is 10, times three is 30. So it turns out that there are exactly 30 factors of 720. So the main thing I wanted to emphasize in this video is, is I, I, this sort of reasoning of, of, of prime factoring a number so that we can make deductions about the factors of that number. But for, for, for this exact question, or, or, and, and for questions that, uh, that are built on, on this concept, it can be useful to have this in formula form. So let's put, let's put everything that we just did uh, uh, into a formula for the number of factors of a number. And let's see, I guess, well, I guess let's focus on, uh, on this version. So this is the prime factored form of 720. So if we say a number that is prime factored, a number that is prime factored to the form, I guess, you know, uh, one of its prime to the power, uh, another of its prime to do its power, and so on. So a number is prime factored to a to the x, that's just like two to the four, and, and b to the y, and c to the z. A number prime factored to this form, prime factored, I'll say two, this form, has how many factors? Well, what we did here is we said, we said, well, there was four twos, and that meant there were five ways to deal with the two. So it was just this exponent plus one, right? Two threes meant three ways to deal with it. So it has, so it has in formula form, x plus one, 
that would be the you know in, 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 in generic terms that would be the number of ways to deal with the with the a and uh, y plus one ways to deal with the b and c not c z plus one ways to deal with the last one uh, and so I, I i said we could answer this question in just a few seconds and really we can this prime factoring is quick and we get it in this form and then right away we just add one to each of the exponents and multiply together and we're left with the exact number of factors that our original number has